before evolution can even start, you have to have that first cell. Nobody has ever made a cell in the laboratory. Nobody's ever even come, clo come close, and nobody even has an idea on how to do it. And every year, that target of making a cell becomes more complex. It is time of the gaps. They will insert time in their gaps and say, time took care of this. This idea that, that well, you had billions of years, that's billions of years of trouble. The general public is totally clueless on this and misled because the general public surveys have been taken. Two thirds of the general public feels, believes that scientists have created life in the laboratory, mm. life like single cells. And one third of the general public thinks that scientists have made simple, uh, 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 complex organisms like, like, like frogs, small complex organisms like frogs in the lab. We've not even made a cell. We don't even know how to make a cell and everybody is thrown off on this thing and this whole idea of the primordial soup model that everybody right. hears about in school, which is molecules were in a pond, there were some lightning strikes, those formed the right sort of molecules that came together that formed a cell, the cells came together and formed uh, these organisms that came out of some pool of water. That is the typical model that is actually not just for fourth graders, that is spoken about even in advanced textbooks in the universities. I'm talking about advanced textbooks mm -hmm. for graduate students in university. That's the extent of the model and that is fallacious. This is the common way. Label him as a creationist and run away. So this is perfect because this kind of gets right down to the challenge that you've recently put out where you're basically saying put up or shut up. And I love it. I watched another video of you where you said you came locked and loaded. And I think that's a perfect it's a perfect phrase to describe what I kind of see in your mentality. You're coming with with something that you want to that you want to show the world. And so can you go into that a little bit and describe uh what are the the sort of sacred cows that you're that you're coming against? What are the things that you're the big questions that you're asking them to answer that they I what to me it seems like it is assumed in academia it is in, in, uh, assumed in the general public that all of these questions have been answered. Here you are saying answer them. What what are these questions? I've asked five questions. Those are not the five questions. Those are five of five thousand that I could have asked. Hmm. They're, they're really five of 5,000, but they're some of the most basic. And, and, uh, and they're not the hardest questions. They're some of the most basic. They're not the hardest. I have, I have a whole list of other harder questions. And so, so how, would, how would you hook the amino acids together <clears throat> to make the polypeptides, which are these, these molecules that, that are all the proteins and all the, the vast majority of enzymes. Enzymes are the little molecular machines that, that construct us. So, you know, you, you eat ham and eggs this morning, and how is that a part of your body this afternoon? How did that happen? Well, enzymes broke down those structures and rebuilt them as, as part of your body. <clears throat> so uh, uh, the second class is if you had nucle nucleic acids, which I'll give to you, how do you make that into RNA? Because there's a whole hypothesis that's been around since the 1960s called the RNA world hypothesis. <clears throat> and they have all of these scenarios that RNA formed first. And what I show on this video is if you happened to somehow get a string of, of nucleic acids hooked together, which I'm gonna ask you to say, can you hook these together in the form that is needed to, to act as RNA? And the answer is no, they can't. But even if you had that, you only have about four hours to deal with it. So in other words, to hook it all together, it had to be totally pure. You couldn't have any other amino acids around. You couldn't have any other of these compounds around. Then it had to plumb. You only have about four hours. So this idea that, that, well, you had billions of years, that's billions of years of trouble, trouble. Because if something happened to form the right way, you've only got four hours. If you had a protein, that, that, that happened to form, that was the, you only have about 13 days and the thing is gone. So that's the that, problem. That, can, can we zoom in or can we just highlight that for a second? Because I think that that, that is, is very, very important because, and this is something I was going to say a second ago, but as much as people that believe in God are accused of God of the gaps, if you say anything related to complexity, 
I've been like mulling over this alternative way of, of labeling something, which is like time of the gaps. It's just insert time into any gap and then therefore it explains everything. And it just is like, we might not, we don't know this yet, but there's a future knowledge coming. Just give it enough time and then we'll be able to solve this. And it, it seems to me like a way of sidestepping what we're like what is facing us in terms of the scientific research but what you said i think is even more significant because you're saying that this is not a matter of if you stretch out time longer that that actually solves the core problem here is that is that what is that right because it these can you just kind of repeat that again or, or highlight that for me you're, you're saying that that it go yeah go ahead go ahead time is your enemy time does not help you it hurts you because the times that you have for the use of these molecules is very, very short. In the case of RNA, which is the primary hypothesis on how life might have started, uh, uh, you have no time. You have no time. You only have hours in order to use this. Hours. That's a big, big problem. How, how do people respond to that? Like, what, what, would, what would someone that you're butting up against say in response to that? You know what they say? Nothing. Nothing. They have no response to that. You, you know, you, you'll hear people, uh, recently I heard a talk by Jack Sostek in, I think it was 2020, 2021, something. He did a talk at the University of Chicago, and it was a virtual talk during the COVID period. And one of the ge geologists said, you know, we really don't have to have catalysis or anything because we have so much time. And Jack, who's an expert, in, and he's a Nobel Prize winner, and he's an expert in RNA. He said, actually, we don't have much time. You have to have chemistry that's faster than the degradative chemistry. And so you really don't have much time. But he didn't, he didn't park there and show and, and talk about the extent of how little time you have. You have on the order of hours. If you hmm. make a compound, if I make a compound in my laboratory and I have only a few hours to get it on to the next step, mm -hmm. I am working very, very hard to try mm -hmm. to cool that down, to try to stabilize it, to try to get it on in the next step. Mm -hmm. Hours is a very short amount of time. Now you think on a mindless early year. So this whole argument of time is absolutely right. It is time of the gaps. They will insert time in their gaps and say time took care of this. And my argument is no, time doesn't take care of this. Time actually hurts you. So you want to claim this thing of time, it hurts you. So, so yeah, yeah that, that's what we're talking about with that. And then the sugars are the hardest class of compounds. Mm -hmm. You think, mm -hmm. oh, sugars are easy. Sugars are the hardest class because sugars have all these different tentacles and, and it can hook up to any one of these points. And if it hooks up to the wrong point, that's the wrong, wrong attachment point. And every disorder, every biological disorder can be traced back to also a disorder within the carbohydrates. So it's really fundamental to get that coupling right. Nobody knows how to do that. Nobody knows. <clears throat> There's people that throw out this idea, well, it's not RNA first, it's metabolism first. All right, you have metabolism. So you get a bunch of little molecules. Now what happens? You just say, now what happens? So, so Brandon, what, what they do is they don't confront to address me on this. They just don't answer. People say, well, why don't you publish papers saying that? Well, absolutely I have. I have published five papers in the field. They ignore them. <clears throat> Clemens Reichert, they ignored him. He says you can't have all this human interaction. He published this paper, I think it was 2018, Nature Communications. So they just keep ignoring all of these signs when people throw up roadblocks. And I'm not the first one to point out these problems, not at all. People have, have been writing books about this since the 1980s. Shapiro has been writing books about this. Karn Smith wrote books about this. And they are utterly ignored. So you say, what do people do? And, the, and, and then the, the, the general public is totally clueless on this and misled because the general public surveys have been taken. Two-thirds of the general public feels believes that scientists have created life in the laboratory. Mm life like single cells, and one third of the general public thinks that scientists have made simple uh, 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 complex organisms like, like, like frogs, small complex organisms like frogs in the lab. We've not even made a cell, we don't even know how to make a cell, and everybody is thrown off on this thing, and this whole idea 
of the primordial soup model that everybody right. hears about in school, which is molecules were in a pond, there were some lightning strikes, those formed the right sort of molecules that came together that formed a cell, the cells came together and formed uh, these organisms that came out of some pool of water. That is the typical model that is actually not just for fourth graders. That is spoken about even in advanced textbooks in the universities. I'm talking about advanced textbooks mm -hmm. for graduate students in university. That's the extent of the model, and that is fallacious. If you enjoyed this conversation, you might also enjoy the Wisdom Society, a growing community of believers from around the world that meets weekly to discuss tough questions, to read scripture, and to pray. Within the Wisdom Society, there is also a book club where members are joined by the author of the book so that they can discuss the book directly with the author. Authors within the Wisdom Society include Paul Copen, Stephen Meyer, J. Warner Wallace, Hugh Ross, and a host of others. Join today, support this channel, invest in yourself, grow in faith, connect with believers from around the world and the experts featured on this podcast. Click the link in the description to find out more.